Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My name is Marilyn Shannon, and this is the Breaking Free Show. And I don't care how many times I hear that music, I'm just sitting here like this, <laughs> bopping away. I hope you're bopping with me. I'm excited today, really excited. It's the holiday season. I've had a wonderful weekend. I hope you have, too. We have a wonderful show in store, and thank you for sharing your time with us. So before we get started, I'm done. Hello, Marilyn. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm just fine. Thank yeah. you. You're all... You had a good weekend? I had a great weekend. Fantastic. Fantastic. Good. And what about you? Yeah, it was fine. Pretty good, was, huh? Yeah, very productive parades and shows. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Well, I had a very busy weekend. Lots of socializing lots and lots of loving. Lots of interesting people at all the different parties and functions I went to, and I was very... I don't know. I, let me take out the word very. Let me just say I was blessed this weekend. So on with the show. And remember, you can call in anytime you want. 919-518-9773. Anytime you like from a phone. And if you don't have access to a phone and you're in Timbuktu and you want to contact us through Skype, please feel free to do that as well. And you can call us at computers. That's plural. Number 2K voice. And then also, we have a lovely chat. And you can take part in that anytime you like on uh, the Nissan Communications website. Just go underneath the picture, put your name in, nickname, whatever you feel comfortable doing. And you can ask questions. You can engage with the other lovely chat members that are in there. And, you know, we can take your questions from there, too. But today is the kind of day, I think, you're going to want to ask questions. So feel free. And so I want to introduce you all to my friend, Nancy Huslidge. Yes. Hello. So glad to be here. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. good. I'm so happy to be here and to talk about my favorite subject. Which dreams, it, dreams. 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 And we're talking the nighttime dreams. We're talking the nighttime dreams. And we're yeah. talking about understanding the meaning of these dreams, right? Correct. And yeah. how they apply to your waking life. And you've been doing this how long? 24 years. And how did you get started? I had a dream. <laughs> now, is that I had a dream like a nighttime dream? I did. Or is I it had a... a nighttime dream, and I'll tell you the dream. Okay, go ahead. So um, this was shortly after my mother died, maybe a year after she died. And I w in the dream, I'm in my grandmother's attic, and I'm going through a big chest, uh, one of those steamer trunk kinds right. of chests. And... Um, I'm pulling out stuffed animals and all of this stuff, and there's this little tray that has some small items in it, and one of those items is a picture of, well, the, it's a Polaroid picture, and it's my mother's body and my head. Was this a real, this, this is? This is the dream. The dream. Okay. No, I've never seen this picture okay. before. And my mother's body, she's sitting at her desk at, at work, and it's my face, my head, and that image just haunted me. I wondered what that meant. So I started asking around. I didn't know anybody who did anything with dreams, and somebody sent me to my friend Geraldine, <clears throat> who became a really close friend, and she, so, so we started working on this, and she said, well, if it were my dream, I think you're trying to be your mother. And that was true. That turned out to be true. Um, I think I wanted to please my mother all my life. And after I worked through that and began to think, well, who am I really, you know? Who are you really? Who, are, who am I? I'm not my, if I'm not my mother, who am I? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, and when I was able to let go of this needing to be just like my mother, all of my creativity blossomed, and it was an amazing transformation. And this same person who helped me through the dream called me one day, and she said, Nancy, we're going to a dream conference. Here's where you need to register. And so we went to this conference on dreams called Journey into Wholeness. And it's, uh, it was a bunch of really experts in the field of dreams, and it was a week of that. And by the end of that week, 
I knew that this is really what you I wanted hooked. to do. I wanted to do it. And I remember talking to one of the teachers and I said, Jeremy, so how do I get certified to do this? And he said, well, isn't that interesting? There's no certification. Why don't you just go home and start a dream group? And so I naively went home and asked six of my friends if they wanted to work on dreams every Monday. And we did that for two years. And I, I learned a lot. By that time, there was a certification. And I was in the first class for that certificate ever. Ever, <laughs> ever, the, ever, ever. Yeah, yeah. So th are there are lots of people in the world today that do similar things there, as you? There are more and more all the time. I did my first training through the Hayden Institute, which is in in uh, North Carolina, out in um, uh, Asheville, Canuga, actually. It's, a, it's out in Flat Rock, um, uh, outside of Hayden. I know Flat Rock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, it was started by Bob Hayden, who's an Episcopal priest, who also um, was trained as a Jungian uh, counselor, and he was just as hooked on dreams as me, and um, he started this institute, the Hayden Institute, and that's where I got my first certification as a dream group leader, and I did a lot of work in groups. And then Jeremy Taylor, the person that I was talking to earlier, taught at the seminary where I went to be an interfaith minister. And I trained with him and received another certification through the Marin Institute for Projective Dream Work. So, as far as dreams are concerned, so you, yes. you, you the, the moment you got hooked yeah. was when, some, when you realized that this occurrence of you wanting to be like your mother came through your dream and it was just it was such a release and a transformation that you believed what about dreams I believed that dreams can give us information that is really important to and, our waking life and that information is it coming from our subconscious yes. is it coming from the universe is it coming from yes. where is it <laughs> both so we but, all, so we're what we all know this right so yeah. it's so it's really from our unconscious which is us somebody else something else I what? think it's us I think it's us I think it's how we're connected to the source though which is us too you know right, right. so it's that it's the it's the um, ultimate connection the That's unconscious right. is where we all connect together That's right Carl Jung um, first of all Jung says that dreams connect us to our self with the capital S, our big self, right? That part that's connected to the divine that knows, that knows. And so, so that's where we're first connected. Beyond that is what he called the collective unconscious. So we all dream the same things. I mean, people will all argue with me till the cows come home, but I promise you, there, I've probably heard 5,000 dreams in the last 24 years, and we all dream the same things, I promise. <laughs> We're dreaming about the same thing? That just looks There's different? patterns in, there are patterns of dreams, and there are symbols that we take from this pool of symbols that we all have access to that Jung called the collective unconscious. So when you hear a, 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 a dream, a mm -hmm. story, mm -hmm. How far do you have to communicate with somebody to, to know that they're, in other words, how somebody sees the dream or the way the dream is, is being, um, is the visual of the dream could be different than each, each of our dreams can look differently. How far do you have to get into a dream to, to know that there is that pattern? Well, uh, so one of the dreams that comes to me, people come to you often the first dream they bring you is some scary dream that they've had because it's terrified them and they remember it. Right. So Jeremy, one of my teachers, said that, and I've, I've come to realize that this is true, that dreams come in a negative way, but ultimately the me message is positive. They come in a negative way so you'll remember them. 
So often people will come to me, and I'll ask you all, haven't you always, haven't you had a dream where a wild animal was chasing you? Or somebody was chasing you and you feared for your life? Right. That's a really common dream. Everybody has it. And the meaning is common? The meaning is common and specific. So, so for instance, if someone is chasing you and you feel like you're going to die, first of all, death is the archetype for transformation. And I would say that nine times out of ten when I work with people on a dream where they feel like they're being chased and they're going to be killed, it's because they're avoiding the transformation that's really trying to happen in their life. They're afraid of it. They're afraid of facing whatever inside of them that is ready to, they're ready to release in order to move to the next stage of their life. And so it doesn't take very long to get to that. And then it becomes specific. What is it that you're afraid of? What is it that you're... And then you begin to ask questions to that specific person to pinpoint... If I'm working with an individual, yeah, yeah. So you use the dream as, a, as a, like a container. Oh, and yeah. And you go into it and figure just out what's in that... Con- okay, yeah, what's I in just, their particular container. Yeah, I, okay. I help them with those kinds of things yes so I have uh, some questions that are out on the chat okay and so I want to run them by Nancy Husledge in case you missed her last name because I think I might have said it quick you said it great I, okay. I'm going to say it better too because it took me a little while and I will say that Nancy corrected me when we were getting to get ready to start because I have always thought about analyzing dreams and she said no 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 it's for her it's not about analyzing dreams. It's it's about understanding the meaning of dreams. When I think of analyzing, I think of a head kind of, you know, when I think of somebody analyzing, they're thinking about the dream. Well, this is much more holistic. This is mind, body, spirit work. It's not about just thinking about the dream. It's about much more than that. Much more, much deeper. Yes. So let me go and, and uh, ask you a couple of questions that sure. are in the chat. And again, everybody, feel free to call in, 919. That's a, You can call right into the uh, studio, 919-518-9773. You can Skype in with us to Computers 2K Voice, and that's not with a picture. You'll come in on, just on voice, or you can take part in the chat and ask your questions there or engage with all the other people that are in there. So first of all, the first question is um, for Nancy. Uh, Nancy, about particular colors that I see when I meditate, can she help me understand the meaning of the colors? Um, meditation, yeah. Well, yes, sort of. Um, <laughs> I'm not a real expert on that. You know, in a, in a dream, color becomes really important. And the colors of the chakras are very important for me in terms in in that sort of universal thing that I was talking about, like the collective unconscious. We associate green with the heart chakra, and we associate yellow with with the solar plexus and with our. And so those kinds of colors, I think, become really important. So do they trigger you to, as you know, as somebody is describing a dream? in a meditation or in a dream dream? Well, I really work with dream dreams, not so much the colors that you see in meditation, but I would think that the same sort of stuff would apply. Right. So it will tell you something. So if somebody is seeing blue or green or purple, or purple it's telling you something. So Chris, if that was from Chris. If you are seeing a certain color and you want to call in or you want to write about like green and some other kind of information that you want us to gather up from what you're saying do that because that's very interesting go ahead i can tell you about a dream that i that a person that i worked with had i was working i've i've been a hospice chaplain before so i've done a lot of grief work with people and let me just say that dreams can tell you a whole lot about where people are in their grief process um so this person her mother had passed away. I can't give you any information more than that um, <clears throat> because I have some confidentiality, sure. but she's allowed me to share this dream before. Okay. So um, so this woman was standing in her kitchen and uh, with an interior decorator. 
Now, the thing you need to know is dreams are very symbolic. They're, they're, the symbols in dreams are so important. So I'll talk a little. I'll talk you through this dream. And so the 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 um, interior decorator would point to a place on top of the cabinet, and a green plant would appear. And so she kept doing this, and all of a sudden, the 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 whole kitchen is filled with this green color. And so what I took from this, first of all, let's look at the interior decorator. So what's going on is happening interior in me. Because all of the, all of the people in the dream are aspects of myself, and so it's my internal interior decorator, that's, um, that's decorating my psyche. Okay, hold on. I want to ask you something. You just made a. You just said that everybody in the dream, are. All the people in the dream are aspects of myself. All, is that in all dreams? All dreams. Okay, point one that I heard that is very important and another very, very big takeaway at this moment is everybody in your dream is aspects of yourself. That's right. Okay. People want to make it about the people that are in the dream, but, and I'm not saying that it can't be because somebody will always come back and say to me, well, I dreamed that my, my sister was coming and she showed up unexpectedly the, the next day. Yeah, we have those those precognitive dreams, and that does happen. Sometimes things do happen literally, but there's already there's always a deeper meaning, and those people are also represented inside our unconscious. Okay, okay. so here's the interior decorator, <clears throat> and we're in the kitchen. Now the room and the house is important. So the kitchen is a place of nourishment. So my soul is wanting to be nourished, you know, if I'm standing in the kitchen. You know, that's where you feed yourself, all that kind of stuff. So, and I'm giving you one level of the dream. There's many levels of the dream, and you're free to take or leave whatever I say. But this is this was what I came to with this person. It turned out to be pretty accurate. And the green plants were, uh, this person had closed off her heart pretty seriously after her mother passed away because she was just so hurt you know she was devastated and so this was like the greening of her heart she was beginning to open back up she was beginning to take care of herself and her interior life was changing and it was a great transition in the course of her her grief process and we could see it by this dream that she had so your experience would, would lend itself to being able to understand this. Am I, is, am, is it okay for me to say that if I'm having a dream about my, and I'm in my bedroom, that it would mean that I want rest? It could mean that, yeah. It could yeah. mean that, yes. And there, there, like I said, so there are many, multiple, multiple levels of interpretation for every object and you really have to kind of know the context of the dream you have to know a little bit about what's going on in your life but if you're really tired and you're dreaming about the bedroom chances are you really do need sleep mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so uh, so again you said that um, we are everybody in our dream we are we are that right we are that and we all dream the same pretty much so how how do you explain that when you're talking about this particular person's dream is it the concept of uh, nurturing ourselves is the point that you're talking about is is what we all dream about? Is that what you're talking about when you say we all dream the same things? Yes, okay. um, on some level it's, okay. it's that way, yeah. Okay. So, the thing is, is the patterns in the dreams are the same. What's different is what it means in the context of the life of the dreamer. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's very cool. Yeah, okay. in the context of what's going on in your life. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, um, so, does that does that yes, help? Yes, very well. Yeah. And now we have another question. Sure. So the next question is, what what if you do not remember your dreams? Oh, I can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can. Let so it it, so <laughs> so there. Here's my theory, and okay. I, I I don't I'm not a scientist, but. I'm going to give you my theory anyway. It seems to be true. Um, dreams happen in a nonlinear part of your brain. 
And if you begin to do linear activities, the minute you get up, which is what? Like walking or making a mental list of what you've got to do that day. If you start doing that, the dream will evaporate because you've taken yourself to another part of the brain. And, you know, if you're in list making and the phone rings and stuff like that, you can go, well, where was I? And I can go back to that. You can't go back to the dream because it's in this nonlinear part of the brain and you don't know how to get to it. Oh, that's very interesting. So we, are you saying then that we all dream? I'm saying that we all dream. Uh, the, the only caveat I would say about that is that um, there are people who are on certain medications that suppress dreams. I don't know what those medications are, but I know that there are certain medications that will prevent you from dreaming. But normal people who, who just go to bed every night <clears throat> tend to have... Um, depends on how long they sleep, but a dream cycle usually lasts about 90 minutes. So you go to sleep, you go into this really deep sleep, you're not dreaming, then you come out into REM sleep, where you, rapid eye movement, where you are dreaming, and that's, and then every, about every 90 minutes we shift position in the bed. That means we've come awake enough to turn over or we might get up and go to the bathroom, or we might do something else, you know, scratch our nose, I don't know. And, and so then you start another dream cycle. And people tend to remember the last dream of the night. That's the one where they've had enough rest, so they're, they're more cognizant of it. People who are really paying attention to their dreams may remember two or three dreams a night. I would say the best way to remember your dreams is to have a pad of paper and a pen next to the bed. Isn't that linear? You have to write down the you have to write something down so that you remember it. So so when you wake up, yeah, it's linear, but it's the only way I know to record a dream. So is that in the middle of the night too, or is that just the morning? Anytime dream? you wake up and you have a chance, you can write something down. So you don't necessarily have to turn on a light, you can just write a couple of words even. A couple of phrases so like you don't have to have the whole dream no now I do write down the whole dream when I wake up in the morning if I have if I remember it now I don't remember here's true confessions I don't remember dreams every night I, you know I remember them several times a week but there are mornings when I wake up and I don't remember I, the dream goes away before I remember or I'll remember a snippet of it but I'm really good about writing down the snippets because that's part of it. The other thing you can do is set the intention when you go to sleep. And you can say, I want to remember my dreams. The other thing that will make a dream evaporate, and it's the problem we have at our house, is my husband loves to wake up to NPR every morning. So the radio goes on. And then, then your dream becomes about Paris or, <laughs> or right, whatever's right, right. going on, you know. And uh, uh, so I have trained myself over the years to wake up five minutes before the radio goes on. I just have, I, I'm so intentional about my dream life that I have just trained myself to wake up before that happens so mm -hmm. that I can write down my dream. Yeah, and so even writing down the snippets. That's very helpful. It's very helpful. So. In, in defining or in understanding the dream, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we may not get the whole dream. We may only get the snippet. That's and then right. Today's snippet might be added to tomorrow's snippet, which might be added to next week's snippet, and you got some understanding. So, so explain this to me. This is something going on with you, right? Some yeah. kind of big things going on. Uh, the, the the information is going to be repeated. Possibly, Possibly, yes, yeah, not, yeah, not, and sometimes it is kind of, um, if you have more than one dream in a night, even though they don't look the same, it's usually chapter one, chapter two, chapter three of the same subject, gotcha. and, um, and with, with dreams over a course of time, sometimes they're the same, or the dream may be commenting on something else. 
that maybe or may or may not be related to it. You may be working on lots of different things in your unconscious, not just the big thing and mm-hmm. the thing that you think is so big in your waking life. You know, there may be lots. This is, this going is on. Re- this is really fascinating, and I and I know I'm asking some questions that seem. I just I think it's really important to really get to the nitty gritty. Sure. I mean, I want to sit here and I want to ask Nancy. So tell us some other symbols, like when you see certain things. But I do think that understanding, getting the essence of of this whole dream life that she called it, is really relevant to all kinds of curious things. But before we go on, there, uh, Chris is asking about the color purple. Can you help her understand what do you about when seeing purple? Well, in my in my dreams, if I have a lot of purple, and you notice that I preface things by saying in my dream because this is everybody gets to choose whether they believe it. But for me, what is important about purple is purple is the uh, is your connection to the divine. It's it's the it's the color of the crown chakra. So that right would be here. for anybody. That same. I can't say that it would be for anybody uh, because everybody has a chance to say yes or no. That, that is that true for me? But it could. So it could mean something else. It could. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, you have to look at the whole. So the color in meditation for me would always be about the sh- connection to the, to the divine. divine. Yeah. That that may you know, and mm-hmm. I think in most traditions that would be true. Okay. You know. Okay, so this is great. Um, I just my daughter the other day. I haven't. I, I so wanted to have a dream of my own <laughs> that I could remember. But now I'm really going to start writing even the snippets down. Like even saw a boat last night because a lot of times I'll in my dreams I've seen boats. I've seen vehicles. I've seen. Things like that. Okay, let's talk. What horses, uh, you know, sure. periodically. So, so here's here's a little. Let me just go talk for, about go, a few go, things. Go, 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 yeah. go, go. Okay, so um, the car you drive is kind of important because it's sort of your persona, you know. So if you're driving driving an old dilapidated car, you might not feel too good about yourself. In your dream or outside in your dream? In your dream. Okay. In your dream. Yeah, this is all in your dream. Just okay. just know that anything I'm going to talk about right now is okay. in your dream. Yeah. And so you may not be feeling so good about yourself. The other thing that's important to know about vehicles is that um, it depends on whether you're driving or not. Because if you're driving, you're in control, right? You're, you're holding the wheel. If somebody else is driving, you may be allowing somebody else to have control over your life. Yeah. See? I had this one dream a long, long time ago. I was so messed up at that point in my life, and I'm still not sure what it meant, but I was driving from the back seat. <laughs> I wasn't even in the driver's seat, you know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people, I mean, I often tell people, you can lead from the back of the bus. So maybe yeah, yeah. But I w- this was this was at a time where I wasn't leading anybody. Well, you know. Well, let me ask you something. Interpreting dreams. Yeah. When somebody comes to somebody like you, mm-hmm. how much of you is involved in le- the being uh, being in the back of the car? What that means is is that's negative or positive? How much of you is involved with the interpretation? If I'm interpreting my dream somebody or somebody else's, else's dream. dream. Oh, uh, I'm sure a lot. But see, one of the one of the kinds of dream work that I do with people in a group is something called projective dream work. And the theory is is since we all dream the same thing and we've all had all these dreams, whether we remember them or not, mm-hmm. that if I have an aha about your dream, it's a function of memory because I've had the same dream. And so I can do my work in projected form on your dream as easily as you can. So that's part of the uh, the, the, sub, the subconscious. Yeah, it's and all the, projection. The collective. Uh, yeah, I can give you I mean. ideas about your dream, and you may go home and explore those ideas and decide that I'm crazy, that that's not true for this dream. I'm perfectly okay with that. My job is just to give you some ideas about it. Right. And, right. 
right? And, and, yeah, well, and as a coach, it would be similar for me too. There's patterns in the way people perceive things. Or yeah, the way people yeah, are yeah, acting. Yeah. It's yeah. the same kind of thing. And I could, I can say, you know, this is what I think it is, or you know, have you tried this? Have you done this? And you know, people can have their own perceptions, whether they're ready to listen or they're yeah, not they're ready you're to explore free or, or not. not. Yeah, I got you're it. You're free okay. or not. Okay. Now, some of the big the big things that people ask me about in dreams yeah. all the time, so I might as well just tell you. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> you hold it on. <laughs> go ahead. So, flying in dreams. People always want to know about flying in dreams. Okay. Well, flying can be two or three different things. It can be that I am um, soaring. You know, right, soaring. I'm, I'm yes. beginning to take off in yes. my thing. Yes. The other side of that is sometimes... Flying is about having an inflated ego. And so so we have to ask ourselves questions and say, you know, kind of look at the days before. And was there a time that you were a little bit, uh, you know, thinking a little too highly of yourself or in, in your ego self a little too much? Or was... Or is this, I'm launching myself into this. Or it can be, or flying can be, getting a bigger perspective. Seeing the big picture. Because when you're above something, you can see the whole landscape. So somebody would come and would talk to somebody like you mm -hmm. about which where those might fit in. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of my practices, and I love the idea of dream work. So I and I haven't gotten into it as much as I would like to, but I, I think it's fascinating. And one of the things that I am able to do, and you tell me, what, sure, what the, is that I am able to when I'm coming when I do remember a dream, is to ask myself how I felt in the dream. Sure, and that tells me something. It does. It does. You, know? you always want to write down how you felt. Yeah. Once you write down the content of the dream, you want to talk about how you felt. And stuff like that. There's a recurring dream that happens a lot. I used to have it all the time. And in this dream, and there's several versions of this dream, but in this dream, I am in school. It's the end of the semester. I've forgotten to go to a class. I have to go take the final. I can't find the classroom. I haven't studied. Yeah, that's a honey, that's the same dream I've had in real life, actually. <laughs> <laughs> So, I have to wait till my dream life. I've had that. So, so I used to have this dream all the time, and um, and it was recurring, you know. And ministers will have a similar dream. They'll be in the pulpit, no sermon. Actors will have the actors not be there. They'll be on stage. They'll be naked, and they won't know their lines. You know, they're all the same dream. You know, you can see how all those dreams are the same. Chances are, you've been really anxious the day before you had that dream. You had a whole lot of anxiety about something, and and it's or you felt a little incompetent, or you felt like you've forgotten to do something. That you know something that's produced some anxiety in you will trigger a dream like that. But here's an interesting piece to this, and so I I always think that um, dreams like that come recurring dreams kind of come because you hadn't gotten the message yet. <laughs> and so for me that dream had a resolution it was really funny so um i was working on on my on that dream in a dream group and i'd shared the dream and somebody said well if it were my dream i would want to know what class i kept missing you know point, to take right? to take the thing it was always a history class well, that opened up a whole world of things. What in my history am I avoiding looking at? Something that wants to be healed in me. And um, I'm not going to divulge what that was because it's personal, but, but I figured out what it was immediately when they said that. It was something that I just didn't want to look at. You see, so it's interesting because if I had that dream, I would have to, I mean, I, I'm asking you this. Would... Well, it wasn't my dream, so maybe my question is. No, silly. go ahead. But I'm saying, if I I would not necessarily have had that dream now, because that that information wasn't relevant for my transformation. It was more on the tip of your tongue or the tip of your life than it would be mine. Right? Your dreams are your dream. My dreams are my dream. 
But we, but yeah. Yeah, so... Is that right? Is that... Uh, we all have the same dreams, and we've all had the same situation. There may be some... The okay. person who saw that was just asking me that question, and when I said, oh, history, then I started doing some work on my own life to figure out where it was, because I really believe that dreams come in the service of health and wholeness. They come to tell you what you don't know. So here's... Um, well, let me, yeah, let me yeah, finish, because yeah, i got to tell you the okay, end of this. Yeah. This is really funny. So... So I had this dream, and the history thing happened. So about six months after that, I had the dream again. I'm in my old high school, forgotten the class. So I've, I've done all of that stuff. I am finally find the class, and I start taking the test. And for some reason, it's the final exam, and there's a break for lunch. And we start walking to the cafeteria, and I go... I've already taken this test. I don't have to take it again. And I go and I get in my car and I drive away. Wow. It was kind of like, and I haven't ever had that dream again. Oh, wow. And I guess I can get a, can't, a handle on what that must have meant it was, in general. It, it, was, it, was, it was so great because wow. I knew I'd moved through the anxiety of, Kind of, you know, we hold on to things for way, way longer than we need to, and our unconscious is saying, "Let go of this, let go, let go." Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is all very interesting. And, and please feel free to call in, chat in the, you know, not chat if you like, just come on to the Nissan site and under the video, just you know, uh, put your name, and we'll we'll see you there, and love to hear from you. And you can call in nine one nine five one eight nine seven seven three or Skype computers. 2K Voice. Here's a question. Do you believe that flying in dreams is traveling? And two people have said they've had the same dream. And I know that's very possible. So, Oh, the dream about? Flying. Oh, okay. Is that, does that mean that you're traveling? Um, you mean like astral travel or something like that? Yeah, maybe. In an, I, and they, it, it, Pam, if you want to be more explicit, are you, when, you mean, when you say flying, do you mean in an airplane? What do you mean flying through the air? Maybe you need to know that kind of information. Well, usually when people are flying, they're flying on their own, on a cord. Okay. They're, they're flapping their wings or doing whatever they do. What does that do. generally mean? Well, that's what I was telling okay. you about before. It, okay. it, mean, it can mean a lot of different things. It can mean... Um, and, and the traveling part might mean in, in a psychological way I'm traveling to a new destination in my in my life right but not necessarily i'm not sure i understand what that oh you mean she means astral travel astral yes um i don't know i it could well, I would, you'd have to be talk she'd have to give you more information i would yes okay yes. so so in what okay so let's in order for you to really help some someone understand their dreams yes you need more information from people about their specific dream lifestyle feelings more what i need is the full context of the dream okay you know i don't necessarily need to know what's going on in their life okay in fact i don't always want to know that right away okay i want to know i want the dream to tell me what i need okay. to know because because i don't like to i don't like to be prejudiced by a lot of uh, information like people are always wanting to say well let me give you a little context let me tell you about this person that's in my dream and all that stuff I don't really want to know that right away I want to just react respond right. to the dream the the content of the dream and that's what makes sense well that's when I get the me. purest uh, the pure, purest information from their unconscious you know it's it's the unedited information that I want. If you start editing it for me by telling me a lot of stuff, then it's hard for me to project onto that dream what I'm feeling from there. And that's important. Your feeling, your intuit, intuition. My intuition gets a little uh, compromised. Now, I may ask you questions about people in your dream after. I will offer, one of the ways that you can work with the people that are in your dream is you can ask yourself, what are three adjectives I would use to describe that person? Mm -hmm. You know, and if you say, oh, they're very, they're fun-loving and they're jovial and they're positive, 
Then I would go back and ask myself, this is a little work you can do on the dream without somebody, is I'd ask myself, now, where am I maybe not being too fun-loving or overly fun-loving? Okay. You know, those kinds of things. You can, you can ask yourself those questions because that's what that person means, to, represents to you in your psyche. And that's why your internal director pulled that image out for your dream that night. Is that because, something you because can, that that person is symbolic of what symbolic uh -huh. of what that okay so that's why those are the kinds of things that if you're working with somebody you would be looking for that's right so and you made you just said something this is some things you can do on your own so so what other pointers can you give people that they can do on their own um well I think it's really important to look at the characters in the dream that 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 will give you more information than just about anything. So, like, if you start, this dream happens a lot. People dream about people they didn't know very well in high school, you know. Yeah, they haven't seen them in 40 years, all that kind of stuff. Well, when you have dreams like that, the thing to do is to go back and say, what are three things that I believe about this person? You know, it, none of it's true because you didn't know them that well, right? But those are parts of yourself that you may have, um, not paid attention to. You know, you've ignored for 30 or 40 years. Oh, so this person that you didn't know, these are parts of yourself that you didn't know either. That's right. That's okay. right. So, um, like, for my, so my daughter had a dream the other night, and she told, she gave me a, the gist, uh -huh. and I said, okay, I'm going to just mention it. So she had a dream that her two children were stolen and that she and I were the ones looking for them. Mm-hmm. And there's more, I'm sure there's more to it. We were in a hotel. We weren't home. And she and I were the two that were looking for the children. Did you find the children? Do you know? She woke up. Mm. How did she feel? Was she panicky? Oh, I'm sure she was, yes, she was yeah. panicky. So. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think um, that we would look at what those children, what aspects of those children, what you would say about those two children in terms of their personalities. Sometimes children in dreams are indicative of new aspects of ourselves that are coming forward, new, new parts of ourselves that, that are coming par forward that um, we may be ignoring. And with my being in the dream, the, and you, you, you did mention early on that dreams can be negative just so that it brings out the positive. So in the dream, could my being there mean that I've kept her from doing something? No, no, okay. no, no. Okay. Because what, what you represent in that dream, I would think, is the wise person. And the reason why I say that is because you're the grandmother. Right. You know, and the grandmother archetype is the carrier of wisdom and things like that. So you're just accompanying her on reclaiming these parts of herself. You you become the the archetypal grandmother in the in the dream. This is fascinating, isn't it? Because I would have gone to all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I would have I would have said maybe I kept her from something. Yeah. <laughs> maybe she, maybe she trusts me to look for her children with her. You know, I don't know, but I would have gone to all kinds. But of you're things. kind of you're kind of literal in that way. You're literal, and, right? And and dreams, dreams are, are not literal. They're really not. So okay, so asking yourself certain questions, mm -hmm. writing things down, not going right into the list making and oh what do I have to do today? Right. But just focusing on capturing something about the dream. That's right. That's is right. Is important. Lying there for a few minutes. Correct. Right. Telling your partner, your spouse the dream. Even hearing yourself saying out loud will help. So even if you don't write it down Maybe. If you Same. tell it to somebody else, they might remember it for you if yeah. you don't remember it. And and just hearing yourself say it out loud. Now, here's an interesting thing. I have one friend who used to be a broadcaster, and he record he digitally records his dreams. He'll talk into a microphone. That doesn't work for most people. They don't wake up enough. They think they're awake, and it comes across like, and you can't understand a word of it. Right, right, right. So, because you're not awake enough. So, 
So uh, I don't recommend that, but I do mm-hmm. recommend having a pad of paper and a pen. And that's so the most important thing to do. That's the most important thing. Are there any books? Like I know sometimes when I'm having a dream, I Google it. I Google the sim- symbolism. I of don't something. recommend that. Okay. I think I think it's too personal, and you're just okay. going to get this one little snippet, like the things that I've told you about all these different parts of your parts of dreams. You know, when we've talked about cars and all that kind of stuff, you'll go to that and you'll get that one interpretation, and you'll think that's it, and it may not have anything at all to do with what's going on in the present. Interesting. So it's it's too complex. To a to a uh, an encyclopedia of symbols. So, if somebody um, is really interested yes. in getting s- some support or interpretation, so where would they find you? So, um, the first thing you do, you I would like for you to do is sign up for my newsletter. You can go to withinyourdreams.com and sign up. I do a monthly newsletter that has good information in it. Like I'll take a topic and work on it. Uh, like when you say topic, like... Uh, snakes and dreams or okay. something, you know, okay. something that's come up a lot okay. in in recent times. But if you're really interesting in doing um, a deep dive and you think that you're ready to do serious work, one-on-one work, then send me an email at nancy at nancyhustledge.com. And I'll get back in touch with you. Okay. That's the best way to do it. So it's withinyourdreams.com. That's not really a fully developed website. It's a landing page where you can sign up for my newsletter. Okay. And a newsletter will be coming out in the next week or so. so. That's important because those types of sim- symbolism is, I mean, people have, have right. shared them. I mean, they we're sharing them in the dreams. Our dreams right. are shared. That's right. Our, right? Right. Yeah. Our dreams are shared, basically. Yeah. And we're so all dreaming the same we're thing. We're all dreaming the same thing. So here's a question for you, and there's one on the chat, but I want to ask you this. So considering the fact that we're all sharing the same dream, yeah. what is possible if we, maybe not all of us got some clarity on our dreams, but a good amount of us, what would be possible for our day li- our daytime life So based on what you know? Yes. So one of my teachers said to me a long time ago, he thought that a lot of, uh, much of the wisdom of the universe is locked away in the unconscious, and the way to make it conscious is to work on your dreams. So if everybody begins to work on their dreams, the consciousness of the planet is raised. And that's really my mission, I think, is to raise the consciousness of all of us, and then to find ways to apply the information that we've got to make our waking life more productive, more, we have more clarity, we have more uh, productivity, we can get rid of the blocks that hold us back. Our life becomes much more creative, you know, um, and we, we, we're happier, you know. Important inf- that's important information. It is. It is. It is. That's very, very important very information. Important. Very important. Uh, I think that, um, I think that dream work, is a much underused tool that the universe gives us. And if we start paying attention to it, everything can open up in a different way. Can I tell you one more story? Sure. Yeah. So I was working with a a person that I know not too long ago, and one one of the things, and I don't even remember the content of the dreams, it's kind of like, it must be like a priest in the confessional who can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you have so many, right? <laughs> who, who can't remember right. what people confessed. So this woman was, she's, she, now this is, this is pretty common too. So her mother was in the dream. Now her mother's been dead for years. And we could talk about dead people coming in your dreams, but they're symbolic. I mean, we've, we've internalized our mother in our, in our unconscious over the years. That's, happens to everybody who grew up with a mother um so i asked her about three things about her mother and she said well she was really stern and i can't remember the second one and then she said i could never please her and this woman was trying to launch a new business Mm -hmm. 
And I said to her, I said, well, where in my dream, I want to know where I am not. I'm afraid that I can't please myself. Because there's that mother thing that, you know, mm -hmm. and it's really all about me because it's not about my physical mother. And she goes, oh, I, I just don't know if I can do this. This, I mean, she said, I, I just don't know if I'm competent enough to do this work. And I said, does that sound like your mother, what your mother would say to you? And she goes, oh, yeah. I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. I want you to go, and I want you to write a letter to your mother, and I want you to give her back all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. This is just a symbolic thing that you're doing. You're giving your mother back all of her stuff. You know, that you don't want anymore. That's right. And then I want you to burn it. Mm -hmm. And it's been about six months since we did this work. She has a new studio. She has a thriving business. She had a camp last summer. She did all of this stuff, and she has taken off mm -hmm. completely. You know, mm -hmm. and it was because she had this block. One of the things that was keep holding her back was this buried voice from her mother well so here's a question sure there i've heard and i heard it recently uh where people see people that have died in their dream all the time all the time so is that the person drink i mean so it can be the person coming back and saying i'm okay or whatever it That's is right. it, it, and it's not just i'm my mother or i'm my father or i'm this person it is actually them how do you know the difference okay so here's my way of knowing the difference. <laughs> so if if the if the person who died so so like my mother, we'll use my mother. I've had two dreams where I felt like it was a visitation. She one time she came and she hugged me and I could feel her arms around me and she never hugged me. She wasn't a hugger and she just told me how much she loved me and I can't remember the other one, but there's twice that that's happened. She comes to my dream as a character in my dreams a lot. Like, she's just part of the scenery. She's interacting with my kids. She's doing something. Those are kind of the internal mother uh -uh. coming out. But when it's soft and it's intimate and it's... I think they break through. I think they really do. So, so if somebody's breaking th through, they mm -hmm. might hug you and it's done. There's not a, or, or there's this real intimate connection. To, they might touch you on the face. Okay. They might tell you. They're, so it's intimate. It's between you and them. That's right. It's that's not, right. Okay. And, it's, and the feeling afterwards feeling. is you feel totally loved by mm -hmm. this person. Mm -hmm. You feel totally connected to okay. them. But when you see them as a part of the landscape or a part, as of, a part of the story. story, yeah, then it's a whole different thing. Then, then it's really your internal mother. And I would say... I'm using mother as the example. I would say that even if it's a visitation, there is an opportunity to look and see, do the deeper work and see what my internal mother is telling me at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so. So that's part of doing the dream work is not necessarily taking it for what, it, what you think it is this moment, but it's part of the work, part of the process. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And the more you do this work and the more you pay attention to your dreams and the more that you clear from this and bring to consciousness this, this, this awareness that you bring to consciousness, the better your life is going to be. And, and, and the way it sounds is you can, I mean, we all can do some of this, you know, some of this on our own bits and pieces, whatever it is, chunks, but... The idea is that you get, you can get immediate results from, from a dream, immediate understanding from a dream. That's right. That's right. And I will tell you that I work with somebody on my own dreams because I only know, if I, if I believe that dreams come to tell you what you don't know, all I can see is what I do know. Exactly. You need somebody. So you need somebody. I need yes. somebody. My yes. my authenticity depends on me doing my work with somebody else. Absolutely, and sometimes we're too close to certain things, and we can't. I we're mean, not I asking can the same see questions. Some things that I 
Right. You probably wouldn't see in a dream. I can see in my dreams, but you want to go deeper. I I totally feel like I have to right. stay in. Marilyn Shannon, Lessons of Vietnam, with NCVVI members, The Tanya Love Show, Your Healthy Pet, with Gisela DiCarlo. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com. Sponsored by Atomus.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals. CarolinaApparel.com and DeltaForce.net.